this recording is a second example of using differentiation by first principles to find the derivative f dash x of a function f of x. And here's our formula that we use to calculate the derivative of a function using first principles. f dash x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So let's see how do we find we apply this formula to finding the derivative of f of x equals 1 divided by x using differentiation by first principles. Now the first thing in this formula is this f of x plus h. What is that in this case? Well, if f of x is 1 divided by x, then f of x plus h must just be 1 divided by x plus h. Now let's substitute these into our actual formula for the derivative. So f dash x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. In this case that's going to become the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 divided by x plus h minus 1 divided by x divided by h. Now this doesn't look too easy to evaluate at this stage, so we need to find a way to simplify this so that we can evaluate this limit and hence find our derivative. Can you see any way to simplify this? I'd say looking at this expression, we have a couple of algebraic fractions on the numerator. Maybe it would be good if we could get a common denominator, which would be x plus h times x. And if we were to get that as a common denominator, then we would need to multiply 1 divided by x plus h. That would need to be multiplied by x divided by x. That is, that would become x divided by x times the x plus h that was there originally. And similarly, 1 divided by x, if we're going to get a denominator of x times x plus h there, that involves multiplying the denominator by x plus h, but if it's still essentially the same expression as before, we also need to multiply the numerator by that. And then this whole expression is still divided by h. Now that we have that common denominator on the expression that we've got on the top line here, we can now just write that as a single fraction. That is, that will become x minus 1 times x plus h, which is just x minus x plus h. I'll keep the bracket on that for the moment, divided by x times x plus h. And then the whole thing overall is still divided by h. So it's this expression here on the numerator that's still looking pretty messy. Can we simplify that any further? Let's see what we can do. Now x minus all of x plus h, that becomes x minus x minus h divided by x times x plus h, and the whole thing is still divided by h. Now that's starting to look a bit better now because x minus x is just zero. So that just leaves us with a negative h there on the top, which is starting to look a little bit simpler. So let's write that out again to see what we've got. So this is what we have now. Can we simplify this any further? It still looks like we could because we've got a fraction and then that in turn is divided by h. So there's a couple of ways we could think about how to simplify that. I'll just put a bracket around that for now. And one way you could look at this is think of h as h divided by 1. And if we do that, we have something of the form a on b divided by c over d. And when you have a fraction divided by another fraction, it's just the same as the first fraction here multiplied by the reciprocal of the other one. So that will help us to simplify some more because it then means this will become negative h divided by x times x plus h multiplied by 
the reciprocal of h over 1, which is just 1 on h. And now it looks like we might finally be getting somewhere because those h's there will cancel, which will just leave us with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 divided by x times x plus h. And this is now in a form where we could actually evaluate this by substituting in h equals 0. That is, we now find that the derivative f dashed x becomes negative 1 divided by x times x plus 0. And that just works out to be negative 1 divided by x squared, which could also be written in index form if we preferred as negative x to the negative 2. So that is a second example of using differentiation by first principles. Again, be able to simplify the expression until it's in a form where we can evaluate the limit at h equals 0. That is the key strategy we're using here.